The breeding behaviour of Eclectus parrots has been extensively studied in the wild. This research revealed three distinct behaviours involved with male hypersexuality. These are opportunistic breeding behaviour, a short highly regulated mating phase of the breeding cycle, and cooperative breeding behaviour. Eclectus parrots, like many tropical species, are opportunistic breeders. Their year is divided into non-breeding and breeding periods. The abundance of food during the non-breeding period accelerates recovery from the previous breeding season and aids the completion of the molt. The timing of breeding for most species, including Eclectus parrots, is regulated by food supply, climate, molt completion and presence of a mate. Photo period also influences the onset of breeding behaviour in most birds. Tropical opportunistic breeders are not fundamentally different from other species. All are photoperiodic to different degrees, but the relative importance of non-photoperiodic cues in fine-tuning the timing of breeding varies. For example, the tropical golden shoulder parrot starts to breed after the wet season when food supplies are most abundant. Its breeding behaviour is controlled entirely by the non-photoperiodic cues of climate and food supply. Despite the same favourable autumn conditions, Eclectus parrots rarely breed at this time. Their first opportunity to breed varies from year to year according to food abundance and availability of dry nest holes. These non-photoperiodic cues are determined by the duration and intensity of wet season rains. Their alignment with the photoperiodic cues of the winter solstice represents the ideal time for Eclectus parrots to breed. However, the crucial cue that initiates their breeding behaviour is the female's occupation of the dry nest hole. Accordingly, the breeding period starts when the female occupies the nest hole. Before this time, Eclectus parrots show no desire to breed. The breeding period is divided into a mating phase and much longer period of parental care. The onset of breeding behaviour in Eclectus parrots is rapid. Mating can occur within 24 to 48 hours of the female occupying the nest hollow. The first egg of two may be laid as early as seven days after the first mating. This short mating phase of reproduction involves courtship rituals, copulation and aggression. In birds with male hypersexuality, these mating behaviours are unregulated and continue unchecked. The cooperative breeding behaviour of Eclectus parrots is the final biological influence on the male hypersexuality to be discussed. After occupying the nest hole, females receive all of their food, mostly fruit, from the male by regurgitation. Nestlings also get all of their food from the males but indirectly via their mothers. In the wild, this feeding responsibility is often shared by several males and may continue for 8 to 11 months of the year. This cooperative breeding behaviour is unique amongst citizens. In the home setting, this same hardwired feeding behaviour is an accompanying feature of male hypersexuality. The neurohormonal regulation of avian breeding behaviours is now described in order to explain the physiological mechanisms that link the mating phase of reproduction to male hypersexuality. The occupation of the nest hole is the ultimate stimulus that triggers the female's brain to release gonadotrophin release hormone. This hormone initiates breeding behaviour by stimulating the pituitary gland to synthesize and release the gonadotrophins, follicle-stimulating hormone, and luteinizing hormone. Breeding behavior of the male, which is ignited as soon as the female occupies the nest hole, is also regulated by gonadotrophin release hormone and the release of testosterone. 
Testosterone levels are typically high during the mating phase and decrease with the onset of parental care behaviour. Testosterone plays an important role in gamete production and also influences social and aggressive behaviour. Elevated testosterone is not maintained for prolonged periods because it can be costly leading to immune suppression. Male hypersexuality is in part characterised by the unregulated mating behaviours and the complicated health consequences associated with elevated testosterone. The unregulated mating behaviours are largely explained by the absence of natural biological and neurohormonal responses that bring an end to the mating phase of reproduction. In nature, female eclectus parrots reject the male's sexual advances immediately after the second egg is laid. This response is thought to stimulate the release of gonadotrophin inhibiting hormone which lowers testosterone levels and rapidly extinguishes the sex drive of the male. The reaction facilitates the transition from aggressive and sexual behaviours to those relating to parental care. The immediate cause of male hypersexual behaviours in eclectus parrots is the absence of a suitable response from a female breeding partner to bring an end to the mating phase of reproduction. Without gonadotrophin inhibiting hormone regulation, testosterone levels remain elevated resulting in uncontrolled mating behaviours and aggression. Male hypersexuality is characterised by regurgitation as courtship feeding and or non-sexual allofeeding, copulation in the form of masturbation, Aggression as a result of elevated testosterone or non-sexual territorial defence. These mating behaviours are directed towards human or inanimate objects. Direct eye contact and regurgitation are courtship rituals that precede copulation. Copulation is mostly in the form of prolonged and unsatisfied masturbation that rarely culminates in ejaculation. Aggression is a common feature of male hypersexuality. Elevated testosterone, which persists due to the failure of human or inanimate substitute mates to reject the male's sexual advances, is largely responsible for these uncontrolled mating behaviours. We refer to three clinical presentations of male hypersexuality each reflecting their own variation of natural breeding behaviours. The first incorporates the full sequence of mating behaviours. The second is restricted to masturbation. The third involves regurgitation in the form of non-sexual allofeeding. The first presentation occurs in males that have yet to establish a permanent pair bond with a single member of the family. It is also seen in males that have developed a sexual bond with inanimate objects. This common form of male hypersexuality includes the full assemblage of mating behaviours expressed by wild males. These are courtship displays. Courtship regurgitation followed by copulation. The second presentation involves masturbation alone. This behaviour is usually seen in males older than six years that have established a strong and unbroken pair bond with a particular human family member over a number of years. With this presentation, it appears gonadotrophin release hormone has lost its control over mating behaviour. Aggression related to elevated testosterone, territorial defence and sexual frustration is a prominent feature of this presentation. The third presentation is in the form of non-sexual allofeeding regurgitation. This condition is usually confined to homes with more than one adult male eclectus parrot. In this situation, the alpha male subordinates lesser males to feeding support status as happens in the wild. The subordinate male usually feeds inanimate objects and shows mild aggression as territorial defence. Hypersexual males 
may also exhibit allofeeding regurgitation behaviour following the introduction of a juvenile bird to the household. In this situation, the male will instinctively respond to the food calls of the juvenile. To recap, male hypersexual behaviours are linked to the following breeding behaviours. Opportunistic breeding behaviour. This behaviour predisposes adult males to hypersexual episodes at almost any time of the year. Unregulated mating behaviour. This uncontrolled urge to mate elevates testosterone for extended periods, which results in extreme aggression. Elevated testosterone is also harmful to health. Cooperative breeding behaviour. This unique breeding behaviour is responsible for the constant need of males to regurgitate food onto imaginary mates. In the clinical setting, most birds with male hypersexuality are presented because of aggression, fetter destruction and digestive disturbances rather than for the characteristic behaviours of masturbation and regurgitation. Owners rarely recognise the connection between these presenting problems and hypersexual behaviours. Therefore, questions must always be made about the possibility of these abnormal breeding behaviours occurring in the home environment whenever a male eclectus of breeding age is presented for veterinary examination. Feather destruction behaviour, which frequently accompanies male hypersexuality, first appears as testosterone and stress-related xerosis. Other forms of feather destruction behaviours follow. These include fractures of dry, dirty feathers due to reduced bathing frequency and frictional damage of aged feathers as a result of delayed molt. Digestive disturbances and malnutrition related to repetitive regurgitation are also frequent complications associated with male hypersexuality. The abnormal behaviours and health consequences of male hypersexuality are managed by understanding the unique breeding biology of eclectus parrots, especially in respect to the neurohormonal responses associated with the mating phase of reproduction. This chart illustrates the key neurohormonal point of intervention where male hypersexual behaviours can be controlled by bringing an end to the mating phase of reproduction. Once established, it is extremely difficult to cure the sexual regurgitation and masturbation behaviours of male hypersexuality without interfering significantly with the emotional relationship the owner experiences with their pet bird. Therefore, our approach to male hypersexuality focuses on early intervention or prevention. To be effective, intervention must start at the first signs of sexual behaviour. Regurgitation and masturbation may appear in birds as young as 18 months of age. Inanimate substitute mates should be immediately removed. In the case of a human surrogate mate, all courtship advances of display and regurgitation attempts must be immediately rejected. This preemptive action stops these breeding behaviours from advancing to the stage of copulation. Early intervention may help to prevent the health consequences of hypersexuality, but rarely succeeds in permanently reversing hypersexual behaviours. For this reason, prevention is our preferred method for controlling male hypersexuality. Prevention plans, which start from a young age, involve implementing a daily routine and patterning positive behaviour. This preventative approach recognises the need for pet birds to follow the same daily schedule as their wild counterparts. Each day should be structured around regular morning and afternoon meal times and include periods of vigorous flight followed by rest. Daily bathing opportunities must be provided in order to stimulate proper feather cleaning and preening activity. Time should also be set aside to pattern positive behaviours through training. Training involves learning, playing, reciprocated affection and respect. These critical elements of positive behaviour patterning 
are required to support a mutually rewarding bond focused on having fun throughout all of the stages of life. This flock-like survival relationship helps eliminate the development of bird to human interactions that are ultimately responsible for the hypersexual behaviours that develop when male eclectus parrots reach sexual maturity.